really just an opportunity for me to organize my gear, but also share with you as I go. Hi, I'm Morgan, and that wiggly lump is my service dog in training, Dizzy. Today, I'm going to be reviewing all of her gear. I've been away at college for a while now, so some of my service dog gear has been with me, the stuff that I use really often for Dizzy, and some of it, like gear that I had purchased for my previous service dog, or stuff that I just don't use as often, was here at my parents' house. I figured that this would be a good time to tell you what I like and why, as well as what really isn't functional for us as a team anymore. So let's start off with something that isn't dog gear but more people gear. This is a backpack from So What Co. It has a stop sign and it says give us space and then on the front pocket it has my training logo. It's really lightweight. I have questions about how durable it will be but I'm gonna figure that out as I use it and I'm not going to use it until I start going to grad school in the fall. One of my complaints with it is that these straps are not at all padded which might make it uncomfortable to wear if I were wearing a sleeveless top like this. I really would prefer a padded strap. But in terms of the quality of the embroidery, it's really nice and I do appreciate that the bag is lightweight. <laughs> I have a ton of patches and leash wraps and tabs in here. So we're just gonna do our best sorting through them. Let's start out with this handle sign. This is from Pawn Puppies and it says, not blind, just dizzy, alert and mobility. Please be patient, I am learning. I might save this for when Dizzy is doing mobility, but she isn't yet because she's only less than a year old. I like it. I really, really liked using it with my previous service dog. For its purpose, I would give it a 10 out of 10. It's really high quality and it does its thing just fine. I guess let's take a look at some leash wraps. I have these two. I don't know what shop they're from. They were gifted to me for use with Dizzy and they're all right. The quality of them is not the highest, but they were a gift. So I can't complain about that at all. I would use them on her gear though. I'm not currently having them in my rotation. I also have these leash wraps from Pawn Puppies. These are a 10 out of 10 mini leash wrap for me. I love using them on the shoulders of mobility harnesses. Although again, they're not currently in use with Dizzy. They're great, high quality. They're a vinyl and they do have edging all the way around. Whereas if we compare them to this, the edging really isn't there. I have these mini patches. To be honest, I don't even know where I got them from, but I think that they might be good for a patch collar in the future if I ever needed something small or like something small to put on a tactical vest to fill in extra space. Pretty sure that they're just Amazon patches. Same deal with this. It's just a functional patch. It's really like an Amazon patch vinyl with vinyl lettering, Velcro on the back, nothing special. So these next three patches are from the Royal Canine Embroidery. I have one that is an EDS patch, one that says dysautonomia service dog, and one that says, please be patient, I am learning. I love these, they are amazing quality. The only thing about them is that I did not get them with Velcro, so I haven't used them on anything yet because it would be a little bit inconvenient to, but I really do hope to one day because the quality is gorgeous. Somewhere I do have two of these. This one is just a service dog and training patch in yellow. It's nice to have stuff like this, but it's not really in my regular rotation at the moment. Here's a patch that I'm probably not going to keep around. It says in training, it doesn't really have edging. It's holographic and pink, and that's really cool for some people, but I like my gear personally just to be a little bit more professional. I will probably be getting rid of this one. It's just not really functional for our team. These are some So What Co patches. I actually have one of these from the matching set sewed onto my denim jacket, but they are the witchy set from her. Two service dog patches and like like a Ouija board patch. I like them a lot aesthetically. They're really cool. I'm not sure where these patches are from, but they are a matching set. One says stop service dog in training. The other one says stop, no touch, no talk, no eye contact. I used these a lot with my previous service dog on one of his tactical vests. They're pretty good, nice and high quality, good embroidery, all the things. They're just a little bit basic. I know that I said professional, but I do like a little bit of color. I'm definitely going to be keeping these around in case I really want to know 
no nonsense look on Dizzy one day. Same deal here. This is just a please don't pet me. I'm working patch. These are great to have around. This patch is from my friend's shop, Dancing Paws Co. It was sent to me for free. It says stop, do not distract, and has a bunch of symbols crossed out. I really like this and I will probably use it at some point. I haven't yet. Now their quality has improved a lot since I've gotten this patch, so it's definitely worth checking them out. They're really lovely people. I wish you'd settle down. She's in heat, so she's a little wonky. Here's something I love, and I'll probably find a way to attach to some gear that I currently have in use. This is an EDS tab from Wally Wears Co., and I just really like it. It's super nice. So this is a leash from a shop that is no longer around anymore, Sour Hound Co. It's been my everyday leash since before I got dizzy when I still had my previous service dog, probably for about two years. And it's about time it retires. I mean, one of the Chicago screws popped off of the traffic handle. It's just starting to show signs of wear and tear. I loved this leash. I would have given it a 10 out of 10 before it started breaking. It's no longer going to be our daily rotation anymore just because it is starting to break down with two years of almost everyday use. To replace it, I have this thing of beauty. This is a multifunctional leash from Dino Dog and I haven't brought myself to use it yet because it's so pristine and nice. I just wanna keep it in original condition. Different ways to fasten it. Uh, it is all black, so all black hardware. It has grippy on the handle parts and then the rest is just a sleek black biothane. This is the best quality of biothane that I have ever felt in my life. It's almost like so thick that it's gummy. Right now, the only biothane collars that I have are these two, also from Dino Dog. So this one I got to sit really loosely around her neck, kind of more as an accessory than a functional collar, but I had ordered it in Coyote and they did send it in black. So I did get it remade by them in Coyote too. And I asked for it to be a smaller size. So this one is going to be more functional as a collar. And this one is kind of more of a low hanging accessory for fun and like extra use with outfits. But again, the biothane quality is so amazing. So I think that they'll help Dizzy to look a little bit more badass. You know, when she isn't wearing pink panties. I also have this biothane traffic lead from Braver Hun. I just started using this with Dizzy because she's finally tall enough to make sense to use it. I don't think that they're making gear anymore from what I can tell, but I like it. We're in summer right now, so winter gear is not a concern, but I did just want to quickly show this off. This is a snood made by my good friend Crocheting with Q or Accessibility on Instagram. I will link them. It goes over the dog's ears. I'll see if I can find a picture to keep them nice and warm. That's really important because I live in the Midwest. So while it's sweltering out right now, this is useful for later. Let's take a look at some vests. This is a One Tigress straight front Apollo 09 tactical vest. It is convertible from vest to a cape. It does have zippered pockets and it's not my favorite piece of gear. I use this almost every time I wanted to put a vest on my previous service dog. And I liked it. I mean, it's really durable. It's really functional. The quality of it is nice. It is padded on the inside. But with Dizzy, I just don't see myself using it. It does tend to slide around on the back of the dog. And I just think that I prefer different styles to this. In terms of tactical vests, what do I prefer? This one. I'm pretty sure that this is an ice thing. Yeah, it is. It doesn't have zippered pockets, which I don't love, but I do find that it doesn't slide around on the dog as much because it is really secure. I think that the quality of this does feel more durable to me. And in terms of tactical vests, I do just prefer the way that this looks on my dog. On the vest right now are these ice blue, navy, and black patches. I got them as a mystery pack along with this matching leash wrap. And I love them. They're really, really great. I would never have picked these colors but they look very professional on my dog and it is a really good look. 
On the front here is another patch from Dancing Paws Co. I figured as long as I had the space, I might as well add my Ehlers Danlos patch to it. It just looks really nice and cohesive as a set and it is professional, but I feel like a little bit fun with the blue on it too. This is a vest I made myself. It's black and zebra. I keep it just because I wouldn't feel confident selling something that I had sewed myself. I just don't reach for it because I have gear that I absolutely love. If you watched my graduation vlog, you will remember this vest. This is my pride vest. It says service dog do not pet on the side with some rainbow hearts and on the back it says working with pride. This patch is from Yellow Paws and I love it. It is a non-binary flag inspired Feywild dog training patch. That's my training company. And if you didn't know, I'm non-binary and use they, them pronouns. I think that this is just a beautiful vest. It's really, really close to my heart. Quality of it is amazing. On the inside, there's like this plasticky stuff, which I feel would insulate it from a cooling coat and also help it to hold up longer. I am obsessed with this vest. I would definitely get more of them in the future. But in terms of what vest I have that gets the most use it's this one this one is from banworth designs it is my program vest on the side it says service dog and training do not distract and on the back it has a please be patient i am learning patch and again my training logo which is a lab in a vest with a butterfly on its nose quality of this vest is very good in terms of the vest that i love using the most it is this one i have never had a vest that people stop to read so often is this vest. People will be telling their children, look, it's a service dog in training. It says don't distract. Something about this is just so clear to the general public. I adore it. I would get more of these in the future for my training clients. It's stellar. In addition to vests, I do have one Y front harness. This one is from Dapper Dude Co. It is super cool. So on the inside, it's like these pink vinyl roses. And on the outside, it's red webbing and it does say service dog across it. Now this was not meant for mobility, so it's not sound for that, but it does fit Dizzy really, really well, despite having gotten it from my previous service dog. And it's a really nice warm weather piece of gear. Both of my mobility harnesses are from Yup. I will start with the one that I like more. This one is second hand. It has rose gold hardware that's kind of starting to wear away. It is wine on the outside and then some kind of pink on the inside. It is really Really, really gorgeous. The quality of this one is actually nice. It's kind of got some weight to it, which I do appreciate from a yup. I'm not using this on Dizzy yet, and I don't honestly anticipate it to fit her by the time I'm starting to teach mobility to her. But later this summer, I may start using it on her to get her used to the feeling of a heavier harness, since the mobility harness that she will be taught in will be heavier as well. To go with it, I also have this uh, guide handle. This is my other yup collars harness, and I used a, a lot with my previous service dog. I don't like it. I would not trust this with mobility on her. It was fine for my previous service dog who was very light boned. I'll insert a picture of him. So he never did really, really strong forward momentum except helping me up from seated to standing. Dizzy on the other hand is built like a brick. She's a lab, she's going to be a freight train. I would not trust her with this. A mobility harness really shouldn't be doing all of that. So I'll keep it for training, but then I will probably eventually sell it. The bit of it that I will definitely keep no matter what is this rolled leather pull strap from Yop. I adore this. It is super, super nice, good quality, and it's the nicest pull strap I've ever found on my hands. So this will be sticking around regardless. With it, I also have this Biothane handle. It is from Braver Hunt Co. when they were still making gear. That maroon set also did come to me with this collar which already doesn't fit Dizzy. I haven't tried the harness on her and I might if she's feeling up to it later. We might be selling this sooner than I thought. <laughs> These capes are from Patience and Love. I adore them, but I don't know that I support this shop because she did make Blue Lives Matter service dog gear. But this one is the first of its kind. If you are in the Patience and Love group or if you watch a lot of gear videos or follow a lot of service dogs online, 
you will see this design replicated. It has cardiac alert on the back. Please ignore me. I am working. Emergency info in pockets. And on the sides, it says service dog may jump to alert. Do not interact. I could see myself using this with Dizzy in the future because she is an alert dog as well. And she does jump to alert. I really, really like the colors on it. It's beautiful. It looks fun, but also fairly professional. And then I also have this one, which is like a white, black, red type look. Does say cardiac alert, response mobility service dog, handler may faint, do not interfere with my job, service dog at work may jump to alert, and then the symbols. It has a zebra heart in the middle for EDS awareness. I really like this. It's gonna look really slim on Dizzy because of how thick of a dog she is. My only complaints with these two capes is that I've since started a training business and they don't have my training logo on them. So if I'm using them with gear in the future, I'll probably get patch tabs that do have my training logo so that I can still have some brand recognition on my dog. I did have these leashes sent to me by a follower on Instagram. They're called a lazy leash and they're basically a flexi lead that only extends to three feet. They are a little bit hard to use like this button gets stuck sometimes, which isn't ideal. And because they're a flexi lead that's only three feet, it sort of defeats the purpose of a flexi lead to begin with. What I do think that these would be good for is when I eventually train my dog to walk off leash, that leash is basically nothing. I could stick this in my pocket and have her walk beside me and technically have her on leash while also having her be able to do the tasks that she needs to do. Let's quickly talk training tools. Here are the ones that I use. If you followed me for a long time, you know that I did use prongs and e-collars on my dog. I still own them. But since becoming a trainer myself, I fall more in the least invasive, minimally aversive camp. How you train is your business, but for me, I use my pet Annie treat pouch. Uh, it kind of needs to be replaced because the webbing is falling apart, but it served me well. I have a leash wrap on it from Patience and Love that just sort of has the stop, don't talk, don't touch, don't look symbols. I wear it across my shoulder so you can see it when it's upright. And then I have a flat collar from PetSmart. And this is what we train on. These are the only two training tools that I need with my dog at this point in my career. I guess I also use a clicker. Uh, I do have one attached to my keys, but honestly, I use our marker word yes more often. I hope that seeing my gear review and hearing some of my thoughts about it was helpful to you or at the very least entertaining. If you liked this content, go ahead and subscribe, like the video, leave me a comment. It all really helps. I'll get back to you with another video soon. Thank you. Thank you.